This video is going to talk about Lance Field antigens, which is one way that we can further classify the streptococci in lab unit two. So in 1919, a scientist named Rebecca Lancefield noticed that the streptococci organisms can be differentiated based on different antigens that are on their surface. And we refer to these different antigens as A, B, D, and, and there's others, but that's all we're gonna focus on for this unit. So if you think back to what we talked about in lecture, remember that antibodies will recognize a specific antigen. And so Rebecca Lancefield came up with a way to use the antibody antigen binding and specificity to further identify or give us an approach to identify which Lancefield group an organism belongs to. So if an organism has antigen A, we say it belongs to Lancefield group A. Specifically, we call those the group A streptococci or capital G-A-S. Members of the streptococci group that have antigen B are referred to as group B. Organisms that have um, the D antigen are considered the group D streptococci, so on and so forth. But in this unit, we are going to be looking at two members of the streptococci group that don't have any of these antigens on their surface. And so we refer to them as having no Lancefield group. But as you're working on your unknown flowchart, please don't put NA or cross out, like just draw a line where the Lancefield group is on the flowchart because even though they don't have a Lancefield group, this is significant, it is applicable. So what I see a lot of students do wrong is because these two streptococci organisms don't have a group, they'll draw that line, or they'll put NA, which means that it's not relevant or applicable. But not having antigens says a lot. It does help us classify these organisms, so it is applicable and it is relevant. So please, on your flowchart, just write, write the word none, okay? So let's look more closely at the actual lab test that can be done to um, identify an unknown organism or to determine which group a streptococci may belong to. So as you can see on the right, there are going to be these little latex beads that are coated with a specific antibody. So let's pretend that antibody A is on the surface of all of these beads. Well, in blue, those little blue ovals are the pathogens, the bacteria, and the little red circles are the antigens on their surface. And so what's going to happen is if we have an organism, you know, in the lab that we're studying, and we add antibody A, we're going to look to see if the antibody A can bind to and attach to that pathogen. But the only way the antibody can bind to the pathogen is if it has antigen A, because antibody A is specific for antigen A. And as you see in the picture, if there is a match, okay, if the antigen can be bound by the antibody, we're going to see agglutination, this clumping because look at the topmost pathogen in this picture, the topmost blue oval. Notice that the top right latex bead, those antibodies are attached to that pathogen. So is the top left bead, right? Its antibodies are also attached to the pathogen. Same thing for that labeled bead. Right? So with that one blue pathogen, three different beads have bound to it. Those same beads are also bound to other pathogens. So these antibodies have essentially rounded up the uh, pathogen to one space. So we can see this in the lab as clumping or agglutination. Okay, and you'll see this on the next slide. But let's say those beads had antibody A but the pathogen had antigen B. Well, there would not be a match. They would not be able to interact. So you would not see this rounding up effect. 
and there'd be no agglutination, or again, in more common terms, there'd be no clumping, okay? So let's see what this would look like if you were to do this in the lab. So ignore the text for right now. Just look at the picture. So in the lab, I would hand you a rectangular uh, piece of paper. It's, it's thick, kind of like cardstock, but it has these two circles on it. And what you would do is you would put the same organism in both circles, but you would add different antibodies to each circle. So let's pretend here that um, I told you to put Streptococcus agalactiae into both of these circles. And you needed to figure out which group it belongs to, if any. So we would have Streptococcus agalactiae in both circles one and two. And then you would add antibody A to circle one and maybe antibody B to circle two. And if you look at circle two, this is our positive reaction because notice how you can see all the little clumps in there. If you look in circle one, right, it looks pretty smooth and pretty even compared to circle two. So with circle one, we say there is no agglutination. Okay, that's your observation, right? We do not observe clumping. So your result would be negative. In circle two, your observ observation is agglutination and your result would be positive. So that's one way you can use the latex agglutination test. If you know the organism, you can figure out which antibody works for it. And in this case, I said um, antibody A was in circle one, so it would not be a group A strep. But if I added the antibody B to group to circle two, that's a positive reaction, which means the organism has antigen B, so it's a group B strep, okay? So that's one way that you could use this test. The other is more along the lines of this second bullet. If I told you I had an unknown organism that I added to circles one and two, the same organism, but you don't know what it is, and I told you I added antibody B, to circle one and antibody A to circle two, I could ask you, what organism is this? Okay, well, if I added antibody A in this example, antibody A to circle two, you see that positive reaction. That means the unknown organism has antigen A, so it belongs to group A. Well, if you go back two slides, what is the only group A strep we are looking at for our unknowns? Streptococcus pyogenes. So you could tell me that that unknown organism in my example was Streptococcus pyogenes because it had the A antigen because it caused agglutination when mixed with antibody A. All right, y'all, that is it for this video. Let me know if you have any questions.